Hello YouTube. How's everybody doing? This is a first review and initial thoughts video on the FL Sun QQ Delta. It's a large format Delta, 260 millimeters by 370 tall. As you can see, it's pretty big. Um, I'll show you a couple print fails. The blue ones are a reminder. I put both of them there on purpose. They're a reminder that stock SD cards are trash. Don't bother trying to print with them. Throw them out. Order a real one. SanDisk, Samsung, something. Toshiba, whatever. Swap it out. Get rid of the stock one. Um, the Groot. Okay, so the Groot. We had a power failure. And this printer advertises and has power fail uh, power failure resume the ability to resume a print from a power failure and sure enough we had the power failure I hit the button because I'm printing from SD not Octoprint and it was able to resume the print the problem was I still had Octopi hooked up and Delta printers with Arduino 8-bit boards don't do too well with Octopi Octopi is pulling the board too often and between all the calculations it has to do for to be a delta for the trig, uh, the Arduino board that is, all the calculations the Arduino board has to do, it can't keep up with both the USB and the calculations. And it was responding back over USB and it freezes and just stops printing when you try to use OctoPrint, um, with, at least with this delta. I'm told that if you use a 32-bit Delta, it works, and everything I've seen, when you swap the board to a 32-bit with, say, Smoothieware or something else, then it'll work, maybe Duet Wi-Fi. But for now, I decided to get a, get a good SD card, print from SD card, and so I could get going with the review. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my Decapa group. So the two fails at the top were the same thing. They were a layer shift caused by the bad SD card. I wouldn't even think a Delta could layer shift, but it did. So let's talk about the printer a little bit. It's built really well. Um, it's got a MOSFET for the hotbed, which was surprising. You don't see that too, too often stock. Once in a while, but not that often. Has a nice MOSFET. Uh, all the parts are maker base. It's the brand of everything. The uh, TFT's maker base. The MOSFET is maker base. There's a little I.O. add-in board in there that's maker base. The motherboard is a Gen L, a maker base uh, MKS Gen L with removable steppers. The steppers are A4988s. And there's a pretty nice 40 millimeter by 20 millimeter fan inside for cooling. Uh, it's fairly quiet. The unit does come with Wi-Fi. I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, it comes with a, there's a Wi-Fi dongle attached to the TFT, the back of the TFT, and I did a little research on the Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi among the fact that the, among two reasons. One is the app they want you to download is from an untrusted store, meaning you can't get it from the Apple store, you can't get it from the Google store, you have to just sideload it, which is not safe. So I really didn't want to use the app. The second thing is in the config on the wireless, I saw it phoning home for something called cloud to a server in China. I also wasn't too big on that. So I'm not using the Wi-Fi feature of this printer, which is why I tried hooking up Octopi Octoprint to it in the first place. So anyhow. Um, so the power fail resume, as I stated, works really well. Another feature this printer has is filament change. Now you take a look at that print right there. I was running out of the filament, I only had samples, and was running out of the filament that I was using, did a filament change, the head lifted up, it stayed hot, switched to the screen where I could uh, reverse the uh, filament back out of the extruder, which I did, loaded another filament, picked up where it left off with one or two strings. Really pretty impressive. Um, now that print happens to be Flex PLA. That's the other thing. They advertise that this printer prints flex. Well, it prints flex. Not bad. Not super stringy. Uh, is it perfect? No. 
there's a little flaw down here the bottom layer is pretty bad on it oh, now you can see it the bottom layer was really bad there's a flaw back here on the back side but all in all not horrible for a first try with a flex filament I didn't even tweak settings do anything different um, I would say it certainly extrudes flex so with some I, I'm out of filament now flex filament but with a proper roll of flex filament and some time to play with settings in the slicer it extrudes flex stock pretty impressive so right now um, let's show you a few of the prints that come off it I'm not super happy with them yet they're okay they're getting better but there's just some wavy lines in the side of the hull of the boat for example that you can see you can see it in the side of this one just some imperfections that I don't like um, that I need to try to tune out of there via slicer settings um, this guy here not too bad but you can see on the side of the helmet there's some it's not perfectly round there's just inconsistencies there I would think it looks like it was too hot, but I'm running the filament at 200. Um, I don't think it's too hot. I run it hotter on my other printers. Maybe the Delta requires colder, and I'll play with lowering the temperatures and see what happens. Uh, Buddha Yoda, that came out pretty good. No stringing, one or two little odd blobs here or there, but it's got a nice little shine to it. Uh, pretty nice. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that came out. The green vases in the back are the included test print. And the same with these blue ones, only there the green is a Tesla filaments green, as is this blue is a Tesla filaments blue. This one right here is a Smart Materials 3D Smart Fill Flex PLA, both colors. It was a sample I got. Um, I started with the bottom one, which actually looked kind of goldish. It's, I think it's like a copper color. And then the blue, I finished it with. I then switched back to some Tesla filament to do a regular PLA print. Now, a couple things I wanted to mention about this. The manual needs some help. They really need some help doing a better job on the user manual. It's missing some key things. One of the things that's missing is how to adjust the Z offset. Z offset, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, a delta like this, especially this delta, I can say, has auto leveling from the factory. And because it has auto leveling, there's no bed springs. You can't adjust the bed. So if the sensor and in this case, it actually uses the nozzle as a sensor, and it has a conductive mat that fits underneath. You can kind of see it here under the bed sticker. There's a little conductive surface, and if you needed to re-level this, you actually have to peel the bed mat off, and it touches that conductive surface with the nozzle, and determines level, stores it in memory. It's persistent even between reboots. It keeps its level, so it's pretty impressive. But when I first got the printer, um, it was too low to the mat, so it was welding my prints into the print bed. I managed to barely get the first one or two prints off, and I tried a third print without uh, properly adjusting Z offset, and that print welded in there so hard into the mat that when I tried getting it off, I found out the hard way that the bed is attached with nylon screws not metal there's three nylon screws that attach the metal heated plate to the chassis as I was banging on the print that was welded to the mat I broke all the sheared all the screws off so I got in touch with FL Sun support they came back and said that uh, yes you could use metal but not above 55 degrees you need nylon screws I didn't like the nylon screws their concern was that the metal screws would conduct heat down underneath where the control board is. So I thought about it a little bit, bounced it off a friend. He came up with the idea of using titanium screws, which titanium doesn't conduct heat very well. So it may not be as good as nylon, but it's much better than a, a stainless steel or a cast iron screw. So that's what I did. I ended up ordering a pack of RC car 
Traxxas. I'll post a link under this video because uh, they're a pan head screw, the recessed head, similar to what a wood screw is like that's meant to sink down in, in there. Um, but I found a pack of five for like five dollars in titanium. And then the hassle was I had to peel the bed mat up in order to get at the screw holes to get the broken pieces of plastic out because the screws went through the top of the uh, build plate down into the chassis. So that killed my bed mat. Um, that's why I have a different bed mat on there and don't have an FL Sun bed mat. So once I had to peel it all up, that, that was it, it was done. I went and cut a new one. Another thing to caution you, I ran into a problem with this unit. You can see the rods and each they call these delta towers each side's called a delta tower i guess um those precision or so-called precision rods that it's moving on three of the six came bent i took each one out of the package and before i assembled the printer i stuck them on my desk that's perfectly flat and they wobbled all over the place you have to have those straight that's why this video has been so long coming i've promised it for six weeks now i've had the printer for over a month but i spent two and a half weeks waiting for replacement rods to show up so that i could build the printer correctly and i wasn't even willing to use it until they came because i it was so bad you couldn't even slide this up by hand if, you, if one of the bad rods was in there they were bent pretty bad now, FL Sun was really good with support, I'll give them credit. They threw a bunch of freebies in, they threw in an extra bed mat, so that was nice of them. Uh, they threw in an extra hot end heater, they threw in an extra uh, hot end thermistor, I think that's it, and sent it out, and they threw, they sent uh, extra rods, so they sent four. I only needed three, but they sent four, which is ironic, because one of them came and was bent. So, their QA, QC needs some help. They, they need to do a better job of checking the, their materials. Uh, the materials they chose from an electronics perspective, really nice. Uh, from these precision rods, not so much. So another thing I need to mention, I, I should have mentioned earlier. When I was looking for the Z offset, I can't show you now because it's printing, unfortunately. But when I was looking for the Z offset, there's a menu in there and there has a C clear D something. Let me see. I don't think I can get there. No, I can't get there. Um, there was a there's a button in there, and I'll post what it is under the video. And I want to say that it had the word clear in it and something else. Don't ever hit that button. It tells you nothing about it in the manual. It doesn't identify what the button does. When you hit it, it loses or it wipes out the automatic bed leveling. So when I was trying to figure out how to set my Z offset, I hit that button and lost it. Then when I went to try a print, the printer went down and drove the nozzle through the bed mat and burned a hole through the first bed mat. So then I took the replacement bed mat that came with the rods, put it on, and that's the one that I had to peel off when the screws broke because the part that I printed welded to. So I have had a couple of challenges with the printer, but it's kind of neat it prints the prints are improving so at first i was uh boy this is going to take a lot of work they're definitely improving they're getting better and better uh it's kind of neat to watch it print i like watching it print it's really quiet um i'm happy with it so it, it's a little early to say oh it's a buy so far i'm happy with it I, i'm still tweaking i'll need to give it it's going to need 200 hours on it probably before I'm ready to do another video and then maybe make a recommendation if it's worth buying or not. Um, unless you're super interested in deltas and you like all the specs that I gave and then it's a neat printer to play with. So thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to be notified of future videos. Next weekend should be the filament video barring anything getting in the way. And I hope everyone has a good one. All right. Bye-bye.